All right, I want to show you how to use um, uh, Coulomb's Law and then after that Gauss's Law to figure out what the electric field is if you're uh, a certain distance away from like a positively charged stick. Um, and so we'll treat the stick to be super long um, and goes off real far in both directions and we'll have it just be a uniformly charged uh, stick. And so the way you kind of want to approach this if you're going to go with like Coulomb's Law is say, well, each little bit of positive charge on the stick, so the, you know, the whole thing you can divide up into a bunch of chunks. Well, so here's a little chunk of the stick. And so since it's a little charged chunk of the stick, I'm gonna call it DQ. So it's a little positively charged bit. And what's gonna happen is that little DQ is gonna be responsible out here for making a little contribution to electric field that's called DE. The reason it's DE is it's an itty bitty contribution to the to the total field that comes from this itty bitty uh, charge, chunk of the charge. So what we're going to have to do to get the E total is add up all the all the DEs. Okay. Well, so Coulomb's law tells us that that little bit of field DE, the the size and direction of it go like this. Well, the size is basically K times charge over R squared. K times the charge is dq divided by r squared. Now if we could stop here, life would be easy, but this thing is a vector. Um, and so it points like radially away as we've drawn it. So here's the r vector goes from like the cause to the effect. It goes from the charge to the point in question. So this would be like r, r vector itself. And then r hat points radially like along that direction. It's like a unit vector that points that points this way. Um, so, so here we are. Well, again, we, we're not ready to integrate this thing because the problem is we can't add these things up because they're all pointing in different directions. If you, if you have this little chunk of charge over here, that DE would be pointing down this way somewhere. And then we get here, it points like this. Directly underneath, it points straight up. So the problem is if you just integrate now, you'd be adding all these magnitudes of vectors. Well, that's not how you add vectors. You have to account for the fact that they have different directions. But what you notice is that for every one of these on this side that makes a field that goes this way, there's gonna be another one on the other side that's gonna have a horizontal component that cancels. So ultimately, just from the symmetry of this, you can tell the field's gonna point away. So what we wanna do is let's just peel off all the components that point away. Um, so an easy way to do that is if you just define an angle up here, you can see that if we take the shadow of this vector that's that's pointing vertically, that would be like a cosine of theta. Um, so what we can do is say DE, and let's call that way like the Z direction or something. DEZ is K DQ over R squared. Um, and now it's just in the Z direction. So that's glorious because now I've gotten rid of the, um, the vector nature of this thing. Now this is a, just a bunch of stuff we can just add up. So we're, we're almost ready to integrate, I guess. Oh, I forgot to do um, cosine theta. You have to peel off the cosine theta to get the z component. Right. And so, so now we're ready to add them up. Well, right now we've got to get a handle on uh, what variable kind of we're integrating over as we walk along the wire. So one thing to look at is this chunk of charge, to figure out how much charge that is, we have to say, well, that is really charge per length times length. Right. Well, the charge per length we're given, it's just this constant um, lambda naught. And then the length is this itty bitty length of it. It's an infinitesimal little excursion horizontally. So I'm gonna call it dx. So charge per length and length, this lambda naught dx, that's how much charge is on one of these little bits. So we can put that in there. So de in the z direction. Again, little contribution to the field is k lambda naught dx over r squared cos theta. Now, if we go to add up everything along the wire, the, um, we've got this variable x would be sweeping this way. This radius will be changing as we move from one place to another, continuously changing. And then this angle's changing. So we've got three things all changing. So we really have to pick one thing to like integrate over one of these variables. So we really got to get everything in terms of just one of these three variables. Turns out you can do it any way 
um, you'll get the same answer ultimately. It's just that with um, using X or using R, you'll ultimately get this integral that you'll have to do like a trig substitution for anyway. So um, just from experience, um, it ends up being simpler if you just straight away go to just writing the, the integral in terms of the angle. So what we're gonna do is get x, the variable x in terms of the angle and the variable r in terms of the angle. And then everything will just be in terms of theta and we'll do the problem that way. So um, let's work on getting x. So x would be like a movement, it would basically be like this, um, uh, a distance this way. Um, so this thing would be like x, that side of the triangle. And what we want to do is get it in terms of theta, but using, um, let's use this constant r in theta. Um, and so what you notice is, if this is x, and this is your angle theta, right, these two would be the same angle, they're vertical angles. Um, the tangent of that angle would be opposite over adjacent. So basically tan theta would be x over r, opposite over adjacent. And so what we find there is that x is r tan theta, and so then that's going to let us know what dx is. dx is going to be r um, secant squared theta d theta. Or you could say r d theta over cosine squared. Um, in fact, maybe I'll write it that way. Um, so we'll say r d theta over cosine squared theta. So that's dx. Um, that will take care of that. Now that's in terms of theta. Now let's get... Um, little r in terms of theta. And again, what we would prefer to do is not get it in terms of x, but get it in terms of this constant in theta. Um, and so a way to do that is you can see that um, r times the cosine of theta is big R, um, right? r cosine theta is big R. So what that means is little r is cos theta um, all over, no, uh, little r is I'm sorry, big R over cos theta. Uh, yes, because big R is little r cos theta. Um, and so now what we can do is substitute everything in. Um, and I know it looks like it's like, ah, oh, so much work, but it turns out it's going to save us a ton. So if we say, okay, DEZ then is a couple constants, K lambda naught. Now we've got DX, we've got R D theta um, over cosine squared theta. Okay, there's the, that's the dx. Um, we do have this cosine theta that's here, cos theta. And now we gotta get the one over r squared. Well, so just flip this dude over and square him. So that's gonna be cosine squared theta divided by big R squared. So what's glorious about this is you can see we get a really convenient cancellation here. Um, and so uh, finally then, I guess, um, maybe I'll write it over here, because um, we're about ready to go with this. Finally, what you get is this uh, DEZ, this little contribution to field that points that way, is gonna be K lambda naught um, type over R. So these are all constants. And the only thing that's left is integral of cosine theta d theta. Um, oh, we'll integrate over the whole thing to add them up. So we'll, we'll go, you wanna look at this picture. If we wanna sweep over the whole stick, when you're way at, out here at negative infinity, this, this theta would be, would be you know, cranked all the way to 90 degrees, and then by the time you got um, over here, it would be cranked over here to minus 90. And so what we wanna do is go from like minus 90 to 90 to get the whole stick. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go minus pi over two, to pi over two. All right, and so then let's wrap this up. And so we'll get uh, k lambda naught over r. And then um, cosine, well, the, um, that will integrate to sine, sine theta, because the derivative of sine is cosine. So we'll get sine theta um, evaluated at minus pi over two and pi over two. Um, and so let's do this. So you get k lambda naught over r, sine theta, or sine of pi over two is one, and then minus sine of minus 90 degrees, basically, or minus pi over two is negative one. And so finally, in all its glory, you get um, two k lambda naught um, over r. So the field 
falls off like one over R from this thing as you go away um, from, the, uh, from the wire. So that's going to be the, um, the total field E in the Z direction. Um, because you integrate e, D, E, Z, you'll get, a, you'll, you get the total field E, Z. So there is the field in the, up in the Z direction.